Julia, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a new makeup releases, favorites and fails. My favorite not really series on my channel. <laughs> if you're new here, basically it's just where I go through all the new releases I've tried out recently and review them. The title is pretty self-explanatory. Today, wait a minute, hold on. Today I have a lot of good things to go through. I actually pretty much liked almost everything in this video that I'm going to talk about, but I've been testing out quite a few new things, mostly palettes, and I want to share my thoughts. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. But before we start, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Shop Tagger, which could not be coming at a more appropriate time because Black Friday and Cyber Monday are approaching. Shop Tagger has been a long-time partner here on my channel, but I've been using their app for almost two and a half years every time I online shop. It's a free online browser extension that you can add onto your browser, and then when you're online shopping, a little button will pop up on the side. You just click the button and it'll save whatever item you're looking at onto a wish list. A wish list that I may or may not have forwarded by email to every single person in my life for Christmas gifting purposes. Once the item is on your wish list, ShopTagger will notify you whenever the price goes down or whenever the item comes back in stock. It's especially helpful during the Black Friday slash Cyber Monday time, just because I know I don't want to be going onto every single website and checking to see when the prices drop. It's just a no-brainer. It takes care of everything for you. I also love, love, love the coupon extension on ShopTagger. Basically, whenever you're in checkout, you can just hit the button and it'll automatically try all the coupon codes it can find online for that website. Always save money, like at least 10%, if not like 15, 20% whenever I do that. But ShopTagger has been central to my shopping lately, especially as I've been shopping for not just myself, but other people. You can try that using the link down below, but thank you to ShopTagger for sponsoring today's video. And I think that is all I have to say. Full details of... This makeup look should already be on Instagram. Sorry, I'm wearing my blue light glasses because my eyes have been hurting all morning and it's probably just psychosomatic, but these do help my headaches. <laughs> Today's do fairy of the day is Vivi Meg. Thank you so much for having your notification bell on. And also, I miss Japan, so sending love to Japan. <laughs> and that is all I have to say. Grab a sippy sippy and let's do this. All right, starting off with probably the biggest sneak attack favorite of the month. If I ever made a video about products I wouldn't have bought for myself, but got in PR and ended up just falling in love with, this would be the first thing in it. <laughs> this is the new ColourPop Stone Cold Fox palette, and it is basically their Cool Tones Bible. 30 shades in here. I misspoke in my previous video and said it was 35. It's 30 shades, so not quite Morphe levels, but still pretty big. For a bigger palette though, I do feel like Colourpop's bigger palettes are very compact in size. Like this isn't gigantic. Got this beautiful, almost like kind of faux like snakeskin like croc pattern on it. I did a kind of like bolder grayish silvery smoky eye with the gray shades in here, but I've been using this on a daily basis actually for work makeup. Even though it is like such a neutral palette, I still feel like this brings something to my collection that I didn't previously have. I really don't own a ton of cool tone neutral palettes and I feel like most ColourPop releases that are neutral do tend to bore me. The formula in here is really, really good. I do feel that ColourPop does a slightly better formula in their more like permanent palettes or stuff that's going into their permanent line as opposed to things that are kind of more limited edition. Like, yeah, she's beautiful. I wouldn't have bought her for myself just because obviously it's a very neutral palette. And I don't think that the pictures on Trend Mood really did it justice. They really went like hard with the metallics in here, which I love. I don't really go for softer, softer shimmers. This shade here called Giving In is this beautiful kind of like taupey. It's like brown, but gray at the same time. I also love Rumor Mill, which is this beautiful gray tone matte here. And then the shade here called Bold Type. I really don't have any like taupe neutral mattes quite like this. So that is the palette. I highly recommend this. I feel like you can do a lot of different things in here. You kind of have some like mauve pinky toned cool tone neutrals, gray tones, obviously, and then just basic browns as well. And then along with the palette, they also came out with some new velvet scrunchies. There's another taupe one that I think I put in the wash because I've been using it regularly. I really like their scrunchies. This is so unrelated, but these scrunchies are perfect because I can actually loop them four times around my hair. It's snug and it keeps my ponytail on top of my head when I'm working out. If I do three loops, it's a lot more comfortable and less tight, but my ponytail does fall. But if I do four loops with like a tighter scrunchie, it hurts my head. These, I can get comfortable for loops. That is so important to me, but so irrelevant to makeup. <laughs> and then along with the palette, they also released a new brush roll. And I didn't keep the Bare Necessities palette, but the Bare Necessities brush set is literally like- Literally so pigmented. I think ColourPop has really stepped up their brush quality. So I'm gonna be giving this away. But I think this brush set is particularly good if you're wanting some good eyeshadow brushes. I feel like the Bare Necessities set was a little bit more like face brushes geared. I've never done like a favorite brushes video and I don't talk about brushes very often on here just because 
um, they're boring. <laughs> I always recommend the Bare Necessities set, but this is awesome as well. Yeah, very shocked with how much I love this. Does this palette have a pH of 14? Yes. Do I still love it? Also, yes. This has been a much requested indie review. I believe I talked about my passion for art history in like one video three months ago and like 20 different people in the comment section were recommending this brand called Musée Beauty. This is the Impressionism palette. It is a 16 pan palette. This is the color story on the inside and this palette was kindly sent to me by a subscriber named Emmy. It is the first ever subscriber gift that I've ever gotten so I treasure this. <laughs> Emmy was so kind to reach out to me after my loss in August and um, wanted to send me a care package which was so appreciated. Emmy if you're watching this thank you so much but you ask for a review I give you a review. Thank you so much for sending it. I use this palette, ironically, in a Vincent Van Gogh inspired Halloween makeup look, but I use the shade Starry, so I feel like that should also count for something. This is so pretty. I really love the color scheme. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Odin's Eye Alva 2 version without the like pressed glitters and stuff and a little bit like softer shimmer shades. Formula wise, I wouldn't say it's like my favorite indie brand formula I've ever tried. I think the mattes, especially like the blue and some of the greens in here, can be a little bit patchy and harder to work with. The pink, red, and then the neutral mattes in here are really easy to work with, but these three shades here I just found to be a little bit patchy and um, hard to get a nice even layer when you blend them out. We're still workable just like not the best formula. The shimmers were really nice though especially starry and scintillate. Starry is just a standard aqua blue shimmer shade here but then scintillate is a gorgeous like green brown duochrome with a little bit of purple in there. <sighs> so pretty. Is it the best formula? No, there are definitely indie brands I would recommend, especially for like colorful eyeshadows over this one. But if you are an art history nerd or if you just, if this is your aesthetic, I definitely think this palette is something very special to have and I am cherishing it right now. <laughs> so that is my review of this palette. I don't know if Musée Beauty has a lot more things. I think this is the only like major thing. But yeah, those are my thoughts on this palette. Thank you again, Emmy. Hello, I apologize for a little bit more informal impromptu setup. Between filming this video and then um, editing and uploading it, a few new things came my way that I wanted to review, so I'm just going to sneak a few things in here. I'm also filming this on my phone camera because somehow my DSLR this weekend just decided to die. I'll put it in rice. First things first, we have a new collection from Colourpop. I apologize for the amount of Colourpop releases in this video. I, I try not to review more than like two Colourpop releases per new makeup releases favorites and fails video. I wouldn't have reviewed this one but the theme of the collection was like art so here we are. It's the Baroque collection. There are three like nine pan palettes in cardboard packaging. Beautiful like floral style. I got the Grandeur palette. It looks very brown and neutral but these three shades down here are actually greens. Honestly I'm not super impressed with the eyeshadow palettes in this collection. I think the formula is fine if you don't mind matte with micro glitters and pressed glitters. Maybe go for the palettes if you like them but I think the color schemes are pretty boring and um I wouldn't have bought this for myself. I do love the outer packaging though. I don't know why Colourpop keeps coming up with the prettiest outer packaging for like inner color stories that are not exciting. I also have a blush from the collection. This is the Sage Shays. Honestly, if you're liking the packaging of the palettes but you don't want to get one of the palettes, which honestly same, I think just picking up a blush from collections is usually a good way to get that like pretty packaging. But I think Colourpop is a lot more consistent with their blush quality. So I've been wearing this pretty often recently. I do think that Colourpop's pressed powder matte blush formula is actually a kind of subtle formula. I feel like it blends really nicely. You can't even see it. And this is a true matte. Sometimes Colourpop does kind of like a sheen throughout their matte blushes, but this is true matte. However, the lip products for this collection are from the Lux line, which is my personal favorite line of Colourpop lip products. I love the Lux liquid lipsticks. I think it's a really nice like soft velvety formula. It kind of looks like the ultra blotted lip, but it's not as drying as the ultra blotted lip. So you kind of get the best of both worlds between their ultra satin and their ultra blotted. Their Lux glosses are also my favorite gloss formula that they offer. And the gloss Renaissance from this collection is actually a perfect dupe for one of my favorite glosses. This is the KKW Beauty Rose gold gloss so if you don't want to buy from kkw beauty this has been one of my favorite glosses for a very long time and this is pretty much a perfect dupe in terms of color formula wise they're very very close this one's a little bit thinner like less sticky but this is a little bit thicker and stays on longer so pick and choose <laughs> and then there are two things that i want to include in this video but due to the fires in my area there's been a lot of delays in postal shipping so unfortunately these two things are still on their way to me but i will be reviewing them eventually i'll probably review the new Kaleidos collection sometime on my instagram stories and then later on my channel but the new Kaleidos collection includes a new multi-chrome green and fuchsia space age highlighter which i'm super excited for this has been like low-key popping off on instagram and i think a lot of people are really excited for it plus it seems to be a little bit more on the smoother side some of their highlighters 
highlighters tend to be a little bit more chunky and glittery. They also reformulated Mars Melter, which is the um, pink shift highlighter. They did updated packaging for all eight of their original highlighters. Personally, I did like their old packaging, but I know some people felt that it was a little bit bulky. I think they just um, like kind of updated the like outer design now and they're all metal packaging, no cardboard inside. And then finally, the collection includes new brushes, an angled contour brush, precision highlighter brush, and a blush brush. I do really, really love the Kaleidos' brushes, but personally for me, they're already existing highlighter brush. This is the H1. I don't think that they could possibly improve this one. I hope that they don't make a new highlighter brush that's like more tapered and fine because I think this is perfect. So I will be reviewing the new additions to the Space Age collection. And then finally, I also have the new Nabla Neutrals palette in the mail on the way here. Or it honestly kind of looks like a combination between the neutrals from Dreamy and then the neutrals from the Secret palette. So I'm kind of interested to see how it works out. You know I love my neutrals, so I'm very excited about that and I love Nabla's formula. Anyways, I just wanted to get those reviews in here right now because I'm not planning on um, posting at all elections tomorrow and I regardless of what happens I don't want to be on social media for the days after it it's not that I don't want to be present on my platform and share resources if need be I just I personally am not in a good mental space right now I will be logging off effective tomorrow and I will see you guys whenever I see you guys but take care of yourselves please and if you're in the U.S. I hope you already voted or made a plan to vote something kind of fun funky and fresh for those of us who like pain what um, child. Anyway, so... That sounded different. So Nabla made a lip gloss with my ex on the packaging. This is called the Viper Lip Plumper. Basically, it's supposed to be snake venom for your lips. I'm probably not as hardcore as other people, especially Nisa. Nisa loves, like, painful lip plumpers. I'm not as hardcore when it comes to lip plumping glosses. Like, the Too Faced Lip Injection Lip Gloss, that is probably the most aggressive lip plumper that I've ever tried out, and it made me almost cry. So this is a lip plumper, but you can use it as a balm or a gloss. So I'm wearing it as a gloss right now on top of the Odinzai Apricot Girl um, Matte Lip Stain. Code Julia 10. <laughs> Personally, I don't love it as a gloss. I feel like it's a little bit thick and sticky, but for some reason it does sit nicely as a balm underneath regular lipsticks, um, and it doesn't make matte lipsticks not matte anymore. I'm gonna insert a picture that I took so you guys can see the actual lip plumping effect. To be honest, it's not that much. I do naturally have like pretty full lips already, like the lips of a 20 year old. I would kind of rank this between, if you've ever tried the Buxom lip plumper glosses, that's like, it's fairly stingy, but it's not anything painful. I would rank this between that and the Too Faced. It's a little bit more painful than the Buxom, but not quite as aggressive as the Too Faced one. This plumper does advertise that it has like long-term effects. So if you use it regularly, kind of as a lip balm, you'll see your lips being plumper over time. I've been using this for about a month. I haven't really seen anything of that sort. The only thing I will say is that if you wear this as a lip balm and then you accidentally lick your lips or something, it will taste like you've ingested pepper spray. Don't ask me how I know that. Not a fan of how it smells, but I think that's just how most kind of chemical lip plumpers smell. Packaging though, 10 out of 10. I love Nabla's artwork always. And she just, you know, she's cutesy. I low-key feel like this is the most sought after ColourPop collab of the year besides the Sailor Moon collection. Um, this, I feel like the hype is a little bit more justified because Sailor Moon was disgusting. Four weeks later, I confess I still not have watched Hocus Pocus, oops, but I'ma still give a re-review of this palette anyways. I did share my thoughts already about the Hocus Pocus collection, but just to kind of recap, the Gather Around Sisters palette, I know a lot of people have been saying that it looks similar to both the Garden Variety palette and then the Lunar Beauty Moon Spell. I don't think it looks anything like the Lunar Beauty Moon Spell, and I can see where that's coming from, like with the purples and the greens together, um, and I'm gonna do a video very soon talking about like palette trends of the year and I think purple and green have both been very big trends especially in the same palettes um, especially with Colourpop but I think tonally it's a little bit different the Luna Beauty palette has a little bit more like an amethyst um, like cool tone purple vibe whereas these are a little bit more plummy toned and I don't really feel like there's too much overlap other than the aesthetics in terms of Colourpop palettes of the year that I've tried out I would say this is probably in fourth place behind Sunflower palette Stone Cold Fox, Mulan, and then this. I did really, really like how the darker mattes in here performed, especially the kind of reddish burgundy shade here. And yeah, I'm glad they did this palette well and they did the collection justice. Is it like a must-have palette? No. It does kind of remind me of the Good Sport palette though, so if you already have that one, I don't think you need this whatsoever. But if you were looking at it for the collection, I do think it's one of ColourPop's best kind of limited edition collectible collections of the year. For me though, the standout product in the collection was actually the lip kit. This lipstick in the shade Mary, I really 
actually think that they've stepped up their luxe lipstick formula so much this is the shade it's kind of like a cooler blue toned red i did not like the luxe lipstick formula when it first came out especially in the creams i felt like they all kind of developed this weird like butthole lip effect in the center regardless of whether they were dark or like nude shades but this is so pretty also if you are allergic to a lot of red lipsticks like i am um this did not give me any type of reaction so i think most people will probably be fine with it always do a patch test to make sure but i was fine with it so if i'm going to recommend one thing from the collection it'll be the lip kit over the palette but the palette's okay too it's not going to make it into like the yearly favorites but it's not a disappointment either and that's all i can ask for from colourpop recently three more things first off i think i anti held this when it first came out just because i was um, pretty inundated with concealers and I didn't need anything new but I've been trying out the dose of colors meet your hue concealer recently I wasn't interested in their foundation just because it seems to be a pretty matte finish but the concealer has always intrigued me very like tart shape tape esque applicator it's a pretty thick full coverage concealer and I have the shade 06 light which is actually a pretty decent shade match for me this has a very pretty like kind of soft matte finish it's not super super dry looking like you can get away with not setting it if you want to it actually kind of reminds me in formula of the Huda Beauty overachiever concealer so if you like this formula but you don't like the scent which is very overpowering i think this is a really good option and this is actually the only thing i've tried from dose of colors besides the desi kd eyeshadow palette and one of their liquid lipsticks i think it's really nice from what i can tell it does seem to play well with most foundations i haven't been wearing foundation very much recently this is actually the first time i'm wearing like foundation on my face in about a month i've pretty much just been doing like moisturizer Glossier Future Dew and spot concealing and that's helped my skin a ton but on the few times I have worn foundation on like filming days this has played well with most formulas. Overall it hasn't really replaced my Too Faced concealer which is my problematic fave in my collection but I think it is good and it's a little bit less drying than Tarte Shape Tape so I feel like if you don't like that one you might like this. Too Faced is still a little bit better though. Two more things. The love of my life right now. <laughs> this is the Artemis palette from Alter Ego. I don't know what it is about the bigger palettes this month that have been getting me. I don't know. She does something to me. I've been really into the cream to powder formula in here recently especially for these kind of like olive green shades over here it's just so good and i wasn't expecting to like it especially since i love the alter ego matte formula but these are just so nice and creamy to work with the metallics in here are a little bit less fun than my favorite palette which is the goddess palette those are a little bit more duochrome but a little bit drier these are a bit creamier and softer but they don't like lose their sheen throughout the day i think that's one of the biggest problems i have with a lot of metallic formulas is that i'll put them on they'll look beautiful and shiny and then by the end of the day the shine is gone it's just kind of like a wash of color these don't play around and i think for cream based shadows they play really nicely on the eyes love the color scheme if you kind of like like mustardy tone very warm tone neutrals as well as some like olives and grungy tone shades i think you'll really like this a lot if you missed out on the abh master palette by mario a couple years ago i think this has a very similar color scheme so i've been loving this recently and then last and most definitely least i hate you so much becca zero no pigment virtual foundation do not buy it ever under any circumstances i harbor so much anger towards this little pot right here this was literally actually in one of my dreams the other night i don't fully remember the dream and it was probably a stupid one but i remember that this was there in a negative context all right guys that is it i hope you guys enjoyed today's new makeup releases favorites and fails i certainly did thank you so much again to shop tiger for sponsoring today's video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed down below follow me on instagram twitter and the tickety tickety talk and if you made it to the very end of this video you get the bonus name Take care of yourself. I love you.